Okay, welcome back class. Today we are going to start to talk about Buddhism. Remember with these videos, uh, you guys can pause them as you guys see fit to jot down things in your notes. Um, and if you guys need to come back to it later, you guys can watch this over and over again to help you guys prepare for your uh, next uh, religions quiz. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Today when we talk about Buddhism, we're really focusing in on the life of a guy by the name of Siddhartha Gautama who is the founder of Buddhism, and he is uh, the person that brings these ideas into uh, being and is really responsible for the creation of this particular religion. So let's talk a little bit about it, basically where Buddhism was founded at. It was founded in the 4th uh, I'm sorry, fourth century BC, uh, and it was established in India, very much like uh, what Hinduism was, and in fact, uh, when we talk about Siddhartha, he was a Hindu prince, and so therefore a lot of the ideas that he gets uh, for the religion uh, come from um, his Hindu beliefs. So it was uh, started in the 4th century uh, BC in India. Siddhartha Gautama, the guy who we're really kind of focusing in on, is uh, the founder of the religion. Uh, he founded Buddhism, and he was the son of a great king. And basically, when he was born, he was basically thought to be the next line in the line of the great kings. So basically, when we talk about him, um, his father was uh, believed that, in terms of his story, that uh, two things were going to happen in his life. He was either going to become a great uh, teacher or a great leader. His father, obviously, as we saw in the cartoon video, wanted him to become a great leader. So uh, he wanted him to stay in the palace. He provided this perfect life from him in this palace. And basically, as a result of that, um, uh, caused you know him to or wanted him to become this great, great leader. Um, so therefore, with that said, uh, he one day wandered the outside of the palace and saw pain and suffering for the first time. Um, and as a result of that, uh, wanted to find out what caused the problems of those pains and suffering, and that's what leads to the whole ideals behind uh, what Buddhism is. Uh, so the Buddha means he is enlightened one, and that was what his ultimate goal was, was to become enlightened. Um, big word for your guys' uh, vocab, you know, enlightened basically is like, almost like a state of perfect peace uh, and understanding of what's going on. So he wanted to become enlightened uh, and then develop, find out what these uh, causes of human suffering were, okay? Uh, as I pointed out to you guys earlier, Siddhartha, when he was born, was uh, to become a great leader if he were to stay at home. Um, and if he were to leave, uh, he would become a great teacher. Obviously, as I said before, his father wanted him to become this great leader, made it this perfect life in this palace for him in order for him to want to make him stay and become this great ruler. Um, but the problem was that one day he did leave the palace. Like I said, he did see things like pain, suffering, death. Uh, all sorts of things, and that caused him to want to find out what was the cause and what was the problem uh, of these um, of the world. So, like I said, his father protected him from the outside world, keeping him inside the palace walls. Uh, he saw pain and suffering, and then he saw a monk who had no possessions, which you saw in the video too, uh, as well. And he was calm and free. Siddhartha so wondered why a person like that could be calm and free and from suffering. Um, and he wanted to answer those questions, and that's what basically caused him to leave the palace and basically become uh, search for this, um, the answers to what caused pain and suffering. Uh, so after he left his group or left palace life behind, he joined a group of monks, which we once also saw in that uh, cartoon video that we watched um, earlier this week. And basically, they were a group of men or monks who basically sought to understand simple living, what caused pain and suffering. They wanted to find that answer. Um, and Siddhartha sat with them, meditated with them, tried to clear his mind, uh, and really, in the long run, did not find what he was looking for. Um, so he decided to basically leave that group um, because he wanted to find out the understanding of this spirit. And basically, as a result of that, he then uh, left and went to a town called Gaia and basically uh, sat underneath a Bodhi tree. And this is where they say he sat for seven years or something along those lines. Um, and he eventually found what he was looking for, the answer to pain and suffering 
uh, and ultimately helped him to achieve enlightenment. And basically as a result of that, uh, kind of starts this whole process of what Buddhism actually is. Um, so basically the teachings of Buddhism suggest happens when a person reaches enlightenment, basically they become free of pain and suffering because they no longer have these desires and wants and everything else like that that cause all of the pain and suffering in the world. Um, and as a direct result of that, um, that's what happens when you become enlightened. Um, as I said before, state, enlightenment is a state of pure goodness. And basically what um, Siddhartha found out is that there are four truths in life that cause suffering. Um, and he came up with the idea of the four noble truths. And like I said, these is the cause of how and why people suffer. Uh, suffering and unhapp unhappiness are part of human life. No one can escape this sorrow. Once you realize that, that these things are going to happen in your life, um, it helps to ease the pain and suffering in your mind. Suffering comes from our desires and uh, for pleasure or for pleasure and material goods. People cause their own misery by uh, because they want things that they cannot have. I always use this every single year in terms of you always see that family walking down the aisle and the little kid in the cart wants something from the toy aisle and basically uh, starts screaming and yelling and everything else like that because he's not getting what he wants or crying or whatever else like that. Who's that really causing suffering to? The parents? Well, possibly in terms of embarrassment or anything else like that. But for the most part, when we talk about that, the most of the suffering is coming from to the child because they're the ones that want something. They're not getting it. And so therefore, um, as a direct result of that, they're causing themselves to suffer. And same thing in this world here too. I mean, older adults and everything else, like sometimes when they can't get what they want, uh, they become sad, mad, whatever, um, and it directly causes them to suffer. Okay. Uh, people can overcome these uh, desires and ignorance and reach nirvana, which nirvana is uh, Buddhism's uh, form of heaven. I would definitely know that uh, for your quiz. Um, and basically, a uh, nirvana is a state of perfect peace. Uh, reaching nirvana would free a person's soul from suffering and the need for further reincarnation. If you don't understand that, don't become enlightened. Don't reach that state of perfect. You have to be born again into another life over and over and over again, much like when we talked about Hinduism. Uh, people can overcome ignorance and desires by following the Eightfold Path that leads to wisdom, enlightenment, and salvation. And the Eightfold Path right here, as you guys can see, is right thought, right intent, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right efforts, right mindfulness, and right concentration. All those things are very important for what we're talking about here. Um, and those alleviate pain and suffering for uh, people as we know it. So that pretty much covers uh, what we're going to talk about with his life and how he, what he discovered um, with um, the Four Noble Truths, how to escape those the causes of pain and suffering. Um, make sure that if you guys didn't understand anything in this video, uh, you guys rewatch the cartoon video because it does a really good job of explaining things for you guys. Um, and if you guys have any questions, please email me, ask me in class. Um, and we'll go from there. All right. Well, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this and, uh, talk to you guys soon.